Hello and welcome to another episode of Don't Shit on the Bus. This week is episode number, we're actually on 31, and we've got a guest by the name of Ryan Seaman of the band. I don't know how, but they found me. And now Ryan is a drummer that I've known for a long time. Oh yeah, by the way, Neil's not here this week, but he'll be in the interview. He's just not here for the intro, but he is here. Anyway, I've known Ryan for a long time. Back in 2009 or so, I met him. I think it was at Bamboozle. And he was playing drums for somebody. I think it was Jeffree Star. Somebody had a music project and he would wear like these bright pink shorts and kind of just hang out. And I think he was shirtless and play drums. And since then, he's navigated his way through tons of different artists and eventually found his way to his very own project. And having this conversation with him this week was, it was really nice to hear what it's like being a drummer in the industry, because I know what it's like to be a photographer. I know what it's like to jump around from band to band, trying to work for them. And then I can't imagine for him, you know, he kind of did the same thing and then eventually found his own group. He's in a band. I don't know how, but they found me. Check them out. Great music. And it's with one other person. And it's just nice that he has his own thing going on. He can be more creative. It can be a creative outlet. He can put himself into it rather than just having to be somebody's drummer or studio drummer or touring drummer, because within the drumming world, there's just a lot of different aspects to it. You're not just a drummer. There's types of drummers you can be. So we talk about that. We talk about his journey. We talk about how important, as always, networking is. And with him, oh man, he has networked a lot. And that's pretty much all he's done. That's how he's navigated through this industry. It's just through his friends and the people that he knows, and more importantly, the people that know him. I just want to take a moment to say thank you to all the patrons this week. We did not get any new patrons, but that's okay because everybody else is still here. Thank you for supporting. And also, thank you for just listening to the podcast. If you're a listener, I appreciate you. If you have a moment, leave us a review or rate us on Apple Podcasts. Really appreciate it. But at the very least, just thanks for being here. Thanks for taking time out of your day to listen to this podcast. I am very passionate about it, and I really enjoy, you know, just knowing that it's helping people out there. So if you have a moment, send me a message on Instagram, Twitter. I love to connect with anybody who is enjoying this. All right. So without further ado, here is my good friend, Ryan Seaman, talking about what it means to be a drummer in the music industry. All right, take it away. Ryan, welcome to our podcast. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, it's been a really long time since I've seen all of you guys. I think I saw Neil, I think in Belgium. That was the last time I saw him. Some like random festival. That's how it works when you tour. You just randomly see your friends in the middle of yeah. who knows where. Yeah, and then um, I I just met Connor. So here we are. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, Adam, I've known for a long time. And so, Yo. yeah, thanks thanks for having me on, man. I just, Yeah, this is great. Yeah, relating to the whole like seeing you randomly in different places, I would say for the past 12 years of my life, that correctly describes my relationship with you. I don't think I've ever had a time where we've been like, hey, let's go hang out. It's always been like, hey, we're together now. We're hanging out. Mm -hmm. Right. I've known you since you had hair. (laughs) (laughs) I've known you since you played drums without clothes on. That's right. Yes. There, there we are. We, like each have our, we each have our things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used, I like I used to have a much better, you know, I had a really uh, sexy body back then. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, you know, we're almost in our 40s, or I should say I, I'm almost in my 40s. But uh, I think you should bring yeah. it back. 2021, no clothes. We'll see what's up. Yeah. Let's do a poll. We, you had, know? we had Mark Bubb on yesterday. You know Mark? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, we Mark? had him on yesterday, which is kind of like world. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like everybody just, we're all just friends who have known each other for a long time. Yeah, I feel like the world is uh, the touring world's a lot smaller than people give it uh, credit for. Oh yeah, you know? so. absolutely. We always say on here, you know, you can't do something that you're not going to be excited about in a couple of years because everybody knows everybody, and they're probably going to talk to other people about it. Right. So that just always goes to show: be the best person you could possibly be. Always. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you navigated the industry. At least my understanding is that everything you did, you met people, you became friends with them. And then when you stop doing whatever you're doing, you started doing something else with these other people you've met. Can you quick walk us through quickly? I know you've had a a variety of projects you've done, but what have you done since you're started in the music industry? Holy shit, man. You Um, can give us the abridged version. I know there's a lot under that question. Yeah. So, I mean, I started playing in like punk rock bands, like in uh, the late nineties, started in like Salt Lake city. And then, uh, it became kind of like a big fish, small pond kind of deal where we started opening up for like national touring bands and, Sometimes I would draw them, sometimes match up with them, but we were like the token support band on every bill. 
And then from there, I met this all girl punk rock band called the Eyeliners. Uh, they took <laughs> me on, they're on Lookout Records. They took me on. I remember them from back in the day. You know, they, they enlisted me to play drums for them, like as, as like a hired guy, because uh, the, the girl, Laura, played drums and sang at the same time, but they didn't want to do that for Warp Tour 2002. So that was my first experience of like, you know, actually, I was probably like my like uh, fourth tour I've ever done. Everything before that was like DIY or self-booked with my, um, my old bands that I had in Salt Lake. Then I spent like two tours with the Eyeliners. I knew going into it that um, it was just a temporary thing. They just wanted to keep rotating the cast of people that would come play with them. And then from there, I decided to move out to California in 2003. Um, upon arriving here, I was I was still heavily involved in the Salt Lake City music scene. And I met this band called Fairview that was on the militia group. And their drummer was leaving. And the day I got out to Los Angeles, I just tried out for them. And <laughs> and I made it. They, they had played like the Mars Volta's first show. And they played like, uh, you know, Coachella and all this crazy stuff. And they were just coming off of like an album cycle. And then I joined their band. And I was in that band for about two and a half years. And then we became another band in that band called Kiev and they're still around. They've, they've done tours with like Foles and so for some pickups, but it's a completely different kind of sounding thing. Like when I was involved in it, it was kind of like a, um, like Foo Fighters meets Jimmy Eat world, get up kids kind of a vibe. Cause we had a keyboard player, but then it turned into kind of like, um, like a radio heads B side band. So then I, I left, I left that group cause we just weren't, we weren't being active. We weren't on the same page. What year are we in? Oh, we're in year, uh, we're in year 2005 at this point. Dude, I didn't realize how much, I don't know why I didn't think of it, but there's so much Ryan before I met Ryan. Cause I probably met you in 2008. Uh, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. You've I mean, like, for, been, cause that's awesome. Yeah. You, you live in San Diego, right? Uh, I was in LA for a year, but we left cause of COVID. So we'll be back, but, uh, we're in, okay. I'm in San Diego currently. That is correct. Okay. Well, I, I'll, I'll get back to that in a second, but yeah, basically, uh, <laughs> after Fairview and Kiev kind of just, uh, you know, imploded or whatever for me. The managers that were managing Fairview at the time, um, we were kind of on the same page and they said, Hey, we have this band that's like brand new. They haven't really done anything yet. They're called I am ghost. And so I played with them and that was like my fourth, like it was like their fourth show ever. My first show, we ended up playing a a chain reaction. We got signed to Epitaph after my first show. I remember hearing about them signing to Epitaph. Yeah. That was like when a day to remember was kind of first taking off. Yep. Mm Mm-hmm. So I, I also want to say we might have played a show or two with you guys. Like, like I'm talking so. like way the fuck back, you know, like probably in that area specifically. Yeah. So this is this is like 2006. And then, um, you know, I was in, I was in that band for a couple of years and I, and I left the band um, around early 2008. And then, you know, a buddy of mine uh, named Jeffrey Starr was like, hey, I'm putting together like a tour. I've never done this before. I have music. I have a tour booked in the U.K., um, do you want to come play drums? And I was like, well, that sounds like fun. Great. <laughs> and I just, I just quit my band at the time. So it was perfect. And, and at that point I was like, maybe I want to just be a hired guy. You yeah. know, like I, I put, I invest myself in all these projects. Cause I always want to tell people too, what people don't understand is that like nine times out of 10 bands fail and the one in 10 that succeed were the ones that were too stupid to stop. You know, <laughs> that's like that's, what a day to remember is doing now. We're just, we're just right. going to keep on going. <laughs> Right. Like you guys, like for sure, were like super dumb because I mean, you guys have been around <laughs> since fucking forever, you know, like legitimately. We will never stop. Yeah, that's good. And I, and hopefully I'll never stop unless I die or something, you know. We're both like 85 years old. We're like, we're still going. You're still doing Success breakdowns, man. Right around the corner. <laughs> we got it. Yeah. I was, I was going to say what, what I've learned too in music is that I don't, I don't decide when I stop. It's, it's they who decide. Yes. You know, that's Absolutely. another thing with music. So. Oh yeah, so so I go play for like Jeffrey for a little bit. Um, I meet my now counterpart, uh, Dallin Weeks. I meet him um, at a music festival uh, where his band, the Brobecks, were opening, and Jeffrey was headlining. Uh, Dallin was putting together a band in L.A. He had been in this band, the Brobecks, forever. I end up, uh, you know, listening to the music, and he's like, "I can't pay you." I'm like, "I don't care. Your music's like fucking amazing." <laughs> I try out for the band. I'm like, "I think I'm ready to be in a band again." We're in a band together for a year. We shop the the demo to like everybody. Uh, nobody gives a fuck. We're playing for like ten people a night in California. The only band that thought we were good was that band Three Hundred Three, mm-hmm. and so then we like played a bunch of shows with them. Uh, did like little regional tours. Uh, then from there, you know, uh, we ended up just like stopped playing together for a little bit because everybody else um, ended up like life stuff ended up happening for everybody. But we all went on to like more successful endeavors. Down went on to go play for Panic. The guitar player Connor went to go on to play for Borns uh, and the Deer Hunter. 
and then Josh Rowe used to, he played for the deer hunter and Meg Myers and mm-hmm. he's done a bunch of stuff. So everybody from there went on to do something else. I ended up going to a band called the bigger lights after that. I relocated to uh, DC for a couple of years. Um, that band kind of, you know, had took its course. Uh, I was then, I got the call to go play for falling in reverse, did that for a long time. And then, you know, started a, a fun side project with uh, my buddy Dallin. He had a bunch of songs. He'd call me up to go play, you know, music with them. And then dreams became realities. And yeah. here we are five years later and our band is still going. And I actually don't even feel like we've really even started yet, <laughs> even though it's been five years, five years already. It's been five years. Yeah. We played our first show in um, December of 2016, but we, That's we, crazy. uh, yeah, but we did, we denied our uh, we denied our existence, and I think that's what made it fun. You oh, know, nice. we didn't we don't want to be disingenuous to uh, the the people we were employed by. You know, it could have been really easy to just like wave a flag, but um, I just I tend to know that art is um, is best understood if it just stands alone, and it's it's a real testament. It's like you know we knew we were going to get a chance from you know those fan bases, but we also feel like we uh, also wouldn't get a chance because of that same thing as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I don't think our band sounds fucking anything remotely like any of it. <laughs> you know? So you found the, you found the other yes, nine out of 10 first I did. and then you found. Yeah. So, I mean, but I mean, I've always been like playing with Dallin, like for years and years, like uh, I'd record songs for him when, you know, he had like some solo stuff we do. We did, you know, we put out like some Christmas songs every year um, for a while. So he's, he, we've always been in each other's lives. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just stoked that we're able to, to do this, you know, like full time. And I'm just, I'm thankful, man. Like I, Congrats. you know, you, you never know what's good. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. you. You just, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, like last year COVID was like fucking crazy. And like, you know, we had, a, we've had a number one song at alternative, you know, for two weeks, we, we were the band that knocked all time low off their, uh, 17 weeks, uh, stint. Oh, so you lost some so, friends in the process. That's cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually, I actually texted, uh, I don't know if you guys know Nano, but he, yeah. he used to be my manager with, uh, with that band, the bigger lights. So he's been with all time low forever. But, um, when we got to number one, you know, I'm just reminding everybody here, we were number one, right. <laughs> and then they were number two, right. So like one and two, so then I, I texted Nano and I was like, suck it. And I showed him the picture of, of us, you know, again, being number one, I can't take myself seriously, but, no, you're um, great. but yeah, so that, so that happened. And then, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been really crazy. So we, we've been just like recording music, like on our off time. What, what's really fucking nuts is we made our record and then, uh, our debut full length album. And then from there, COVID just kind of happened. I, I think yeah. we're the luckiest, unluckiest band in history, even though this, this was a worldwide problem. This wasn't just uh, us, but also from there, um, I ended up tracking, you know, a, a tune for the Juliana theory. I don't know if you guys remember that band. Yeah. So, um, dude, that band's awesome. Yeah. If I, if I have time off, uh, from IDK, I'm going to be playing drums with Juliana theory. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. So how, how weird is it that, uh, you put this album out? I mean, I know for us, this is the first time we put out an album and have not been able to be on tour for like the next six months. How weird is it releasing music and not being able to go out and support it? Well, I'll tell you this. You know, this is definitely the longest. I mean, I'm sure you guys can relate 100,000%, but this is like the longest I've been physically at home since 2006. Man, you have to like relearn how to do it. You're like, fuck, home is like, oh, Uh, yeah. I don't know how to like, you know, it's like I say to myself, I'm like, how do I be an adult during this? (laughs) You know what I mean? You're like, (laughs) yeah, because you're so used to having like, okay, I only have like, you know, a month or two or two weeks or maybe you have four months off, but man, fucking like, we're a year and a half into this. Are you serious? Yeah, it's crazy. It's been hard. That's where I'm at. But I mean, we have our first show. I don't know when this is airing, but we have our first show back uh, June 19th. We're, we're headlining a festival in Utah. Oh, awesome. Wait, you said that's where you grew, were playing shows when you started? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, like middle school, I, I, I moved around my whole life, but uh, mi- like middle school and high school for me was in, in Utah. And that's kind of where I got my musical um, roots. How many times have you played the Great Salt Air? Never. Oh my God. <laughs> we Let's make it happen. Come on. I, that's what I'm saying. That's like, that's actually bucket list for me. Cause that's the first time, first time I ever went there, I saw Green Day play. Oh God, that would be such an amazing show. Oh, it was so sick, man. The first time I saw, I forget who, who played the second time, but the first time that's a small was this band called for Green Day. Dude, that was like huge for me. I mean, I fuck like the next time I, I only been there a handful of times, but like, so I went and saw Green Day twice there. And then I saw the, the next lineup I saw was like the Snowcore tour, like 98. It was Aquabats, Long the Beach, Dub All-Stars. There we go. And then uh, Blink-182 when mm-hmm. they're on their uh, Dude Ranch record. And then uh, Primus. So this is this is uh, Travis meeting Blink. That's right. Right yeah. around then. And they're like, holy shit, man. You should be in our band. 
uh, yep. this guy Scott's not going to work. And, and then Travis is like, but I'm a superhero, guys. Yeah. You know, I actually almost got to play for the Aquabats at Dude, the end of t- 2019. They gave me the costume and the belt and everything. I still have it. You're like, I'm not um, giving this back. I mean, I'm, I'm not giving back the belt. No, I, I'll, I'll give it back. It's fine. <laughs> they had me learn 20 songs. And, then, and the, at the end of it, Ricky, uh, he, he had to miss like three shows or something. And at the end of it, Ricky's like, oh, I can do this now. And I'm like, and like that, I had the flight booked. I had the, you know, <laughs> I, they had my gear. They had everything ready to go. I practiced with them. It was like, I was ready, you know? And then I'm like, ah, damn. So they still took care of me though. So that's fine. What do you think makes it to where you can just hop from camp to camp like that? Like I noticed that you've been able to play with so many different types of artists. So, you know, there's this guy that I really look up to. His name is Josh Freeze. And so I would describe myself. I mean, I, I hate the connotation behind it, you know, because I'm, I feel like I am versatile, but I, I would call, I would call myself like warped toward Josh Freeze. That's, you know? I mean, <laughs> Josh Freeze is like, the fucking man. He's he is the man. I've gotten dude. I've gotten calls where like I remember Vanna called me years ago, and their drummer like he just he just left the tour and they didn't know where he went, and they were just like, yeah. I and mean, they're all super cool now, but like they called me up and they're just like, hey man, do you think you can learn like eight songs like in a day? <laughs> and I'm like, fuck. I mean, I yeah, sure. So they flew me out, and I shit you not, they got me a music stand. I wrote a bunch of notes that only I could understand, mm-hmm. kind of like gold tablets. Yeah, yeah just yeah. kidding. I'm kidding. That's a joke. One, but, um, five, seven. Yeah, so I'm like, re- I'm like reading this stuff. I'm like, okay, and I'm like playing. And <laughs> yeah, I got it. And then the same thing happened with uh, this band called My Favorite Highway. I love that band. Yeah, yeah. So they're on tour with this band. They're on tour with the band Fun. And it was Ooh, one fun. of Fun's awesome. like, yeah, it was one of their first tours. And uh, I got the same thing. Like, I was like, I was, I was seeing like a movie or something. I want to say it was like District 9 or some shit. I was in the theaters really late at night. And I get out at like 1130. My phone's just like blowing up. I'm like, what the fuck? And so this is like, I, I still have like a sidekick or something. Yeah. So I, I got a call from them. They're like, yo man, like some shit went down. Could you, you, could, could you fly out to New Mexico tomorrow and take over? Like take over? I'm like, I, I'm going to try, you know, same thing again, music stand, reading shit only I can understand. That was really stressful because I didn't sleep at all. I just like learned the songs all night and just got on the plane and go. But uh, to answer your question about <laughs> how, I, how I can hop, you know, from camp to camp, it, it's, all, it's all been like kind of circumstantial, yeah. you know? And I feel like it's like, can you hang with the person? Can you adapt? Are you good at your instrument? Are you, are you easy? Are you like a good hang? You yeah. know, all the, all those things matter. You know, how do you fit the, do you fit the look? Do you fit the mold? Can you learn 22 songs tonight? Oh, fuck. That would be a hard no for me. Like most of the time. You know, I could learn, I could do that, but I would have to write out every single thing. I literally have to read it. And then I wouldn't get the parts down hundred percent. Right. I would just, I would get through it, you know? Like the like, show would be able to happen, but it's not yeah, like fucking. Maybe the fills, maybe the fills wouldn't be like do 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 do. Maybe it's like do 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 or whatever the <laughs> right, fuck right. I think is happening. You know, yeah, but yeah. I, I always strive to like. I'm, I'm always a perfectionist, so I try to strive for like whatever the record sounds like, or you know. And I, I think that's partially why maybe I I get calls still to do shit. You know, and because like, when you commit to it, you're like it fucking happens. You know, if you're like, yeah, I'm gonna show up and do it. It's happening. yeah. I mean, I filled in for that band Aiden once too. You yeah. know, um, <laughs> Victor Records. Yeah. They yeah. made me learn like a fuck ton of songs. And I actually played on their last album. I don't know if you can even like get it anywhere. I, I don't <laughs> even know if it's on the internet, but it was, <laughs> yeah. Did so they I played release on, that through Victory? <laughs> uh, no, it was like, it was completely self-released. Oh, I, okay. I honestly, swear to God, don't know where it is at all. Cause I've actually looked at it. I, I made a playlist for myself on Spotify. I'm just like, and there's like some, some things aren't even on Spotify, but I counted. There's something like 120 songs that I played on, you wow. know? Wow. Um, I don't even know yeah. if I know 120 songs. Like I think a day to remember has like 80 and that's like the, that's all my bandwidth is like fucking maxed out. Can, can yeah. I ask you something? Neil? So like, do you, do you, do you notice? Cause now we're getting older and shit. Do you notice you're having to like relearn your songs? You're like, wait, how did that go? Or oh like, yeah. Dude, there's okay, there's cool. certain things that like, I, I don't know what it is. Like whenever I started doing the Twitch thing, I'm like, yeah. I'm going to play all these deep cuts. Like, it'll be fun, you know, and it'll be a reason for me to practice and kind of stay up on this stuff that I normally wouldn't play. Going into it, I would like listen to the song and I would be like, I'd like look at the guitar and I'm like, I don't even remember what shapes. Like, I don't even yeah. remember. And then like you do it one time and you're like, oh, yeah. And then like the whole song's just like, oh, there it is. And then you're and you do it and then you're like, oh, yeah. And then I would do these extra little things live for fun sometimes. And then like the more I play it and I'd be like, oh yeah. And then I would like change this part and, oh, I never played it like this re- on the rec. I'm like, you know, like you just start to remember it. And then once it's there, I feel like I got another like two years and then I got to like re-refresh, you know? <laughs> yeah. But it, it would like, for me, if someone was like, hey, can you relearn songs that you fucking learned like, you know, five years ago, I, I could probably do that in like 
a day or two, mm-hmm. you know, cause then you're like, Oh yeah, muscle memory. I, yeah. I remember once that kicks in. Yeah. So I try to keep up on my chops still. I know it sounds funny. I don't, I don't anticipate me ever having to play uh double bass ever again, but I still keep <laughs> up on it, you know? Yeah. You so to, yeah, man. I want to be ready for anything that comes ahead of me. You know, I just, I view myself as like, I want to be able to play drums on anything. Like that's how I've always, it's always been survival. You know, it's like, okay, could I play in a hip hop band tomorrow? Could I play in a country band tomorrow? Could I do sound cloud emo rap, whatever the fuck is out there now? Can I do it? I yes, think that that's probably uh, how you've been able to do it musically, kind of like shifting between all these different genres and then doing it so seamlessly. Like, I mean, look at Josh Freeze, man. Like he went from like the fucking, you know, replacements to the Vandals to like Avril Lavigne to yeah. Perfect Circle, Good yeah. Charlotte, like Paramore. Sting. <laughs> yeah, Paramore. Yeah, yeah. 311 three even. Yeah. I remember I saw him like playing like down or some shit and he didn't even have like a, a floor time. It was just like. Two symbols and like a kick and snare and half, that some, was it. Is that something like drummers can just do? It's like Travis Barker does that. Josh Freeze does that. You have like fucking Brooks Wackerman that goes from like Bad Religion to like Avenged Sevenfold. And I'm just <laughs> yeah. like, how the fuck? Or you have like, like Alon Rubin going from like, you know, Denver Harbor to Lost Prophets oh, to yeah, he's just fucking. A, that dude's another level. Angels and Airwaves, yeah. you know? That's crazy. F-O-N. Dude, I remember, okay, so my first year on Warp Tour, it was, I was like 18, right? And I thought I was like, I was like one of the youngest people for sure on the tour. And then like we were playing in the Kevin Sess stage and it was like maybe a foot off the ground or something. You know, it was like just dirt and like the back line was like fucking terrible. And, just enough to call it a stage. Yeah, and then like the, the sound crew was like completely demeaning the bands and they didn't give a fuck. They were just there. And I just remember this, this band called F-O-N. And they had on their stickers, it said featuring our 14 year old drummer. And so, <laughs> oh my God. so we, so I, so I remember they played right before the Islanders. They went F-O-N, Islanders, Avenged Sevenfold on the Kevin Says stage. And I just remember like watching this 14 year old kid literally like fuck me up in front of my eyes. And I'm like, <laughs> holy fuck. Like this kid, it, like if he's not doing something in like a couple of years, maybe it's because of drugs or something, you know? Yeah. And he went on just to become like one of the greats. God, I have so much respect for him. But I, he and I were like the two youngest dudes on um, on Warp that year because it was a lot of like punk bands back then. It wasn't like I swear to God, nobody was as young as me back then. It was like you had your Bad Religions and like No Effects, No Use for a Name. Who else? Lagwagon, MXPX, Hot Water Music, the OGs. Trio. Those were like yeah. the golden years of Warp. Yep. Then we had like the whole drive through stage. Oh, the drive through stage was. Oh, I was like the biggest pop punk dork kid ever. Like, yeah, same here. This is like know? before pop punk pizza was a thing. Like, but I mean, I understand where it came into play. Like, I yeah. listened to pop punk and ate pizza. Probably just hung out at the drive-through stage the whole time. I yeah, I didn't get to go back to work. Too. I I counted. I, I've done ten of them. So I did like uh, Jesus Christ. That's in, that's incredible. Yeah, the whole team. The whole thing I did four times, and then you know I did like a month filling in for Matchbook Romance. That was like insane because I I loved that band growing up. And I remember Aaron Stern calling me up. I don't know if you guys know him or not, but he's just like fucking the best dude ever. I remember he called me up and was like, Ryan, I just got this like kick-ass job being um, the director of marketing at RCA and I, I can't lose my job, <laughs> you know? Um, do you want to do you want to fill in for me? And at that time, I had like some time off and I'm like, well, fuck, sure, you know? And so I just, I, I learned the songs, I did it and he'd come play on the weekends and I would just... Wait, how much of, like Neil said, you know, there's a certain aspect of your personality that allows you to do all these different jobs. And for me as a photographer... Half the battle was, do I take this gig or do I stay available for a different gig? How did you Mm -hmm. prioritize staying available over staying employed? And what's that like managing that? Because I mean, it's a hard question because everything, again, it's all, it's all circumstantial. I've definitely had to turn down things. You know, I'm definitely like, I was busy or I'd I'd refer, I'd refer like a friend of mine, you know, to, to a gig. I'm like, Hey, I can't do this, but like, you can call this guy and he'll do it. Or if I really, you know, if you just really don't want to do something, you just kind of like set the bar really, really high. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I need um, this much money, which if you say yes, I will make this happen. But if not, <laughs> that's okay because the other reality is preferable. Yeah, I just, I'm at the point in my life where I'm, I'm really happy just being a part of a band and in a band. And I, you know, I, I've had a good time. There, there's pros and cons to, to both sides. There's a pros to being in the band and there's pros to being... <sighs> The, the hired guy, you mm-hmm. know, and um, I'm just at a point in my life where, you know, I, I don't even think I told you this, but like, right as this band was starting, I got a call from uh, Brian Mark. You guys know Brian Marquis, right? 
You guys know That's him? Very familiar. So he ran he ran the um the acoustic basement stage on Warped. Hey, he's Billy he, Eilish now, right? Yeah, we're mm-hmm. getting there. Okay. So we uh <laughs> so it's like you know I, I've been friends with him for a long time. Again, I played I played I filled in for his brother's band. I even played on Brian Marquis' record that came out on Equal Vision. This like uh, Americana solo. record. Yeah, solo record. He's awesome. Um, yeah, Brian's he's the best. So he called me though. It was like maybe the end of 2016, sometime like 2017. He was like, "Hey, I'm going to be working with this, uh, this female artist. She's a, she's a teenager. Her name's Billie Eilish. Like, would you want to would you want to try out?" And I checked out her stuff, and I thought it was I thought it was really good. But I was just like, you know what? Like, I'm starting this band with my friend Dallin, and I don't know if I would be able to give my time to to both things. And then she went on to be a superstar, you know. So I got the call for the I got the call for the tryout, and. I'm just thinking what would have happened if, if I would have made, I mean, like, honestly, I think like if I would have made that band or sorry, her, her deal, if I would have like, if I would have entertained it and did it and like, I got the call back or whatever the hell, like, I I don't know if like there would even be a Ryan Seaman. Does that make sense? Yeah. You kind of found your identity, like your whole career, you've been playing under other people's creations and now you finally have something you can call your own and express and also be like, you know, an extension of yourself where if you're sure. under Billie Eilish, there you're anything but yourself because she is, she's a force. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there's it's, also, you know, being a hired, hired guy too. There's also, um, there's zero security, right? You know, like you can be gone the next day, dude. I've heard of like, <laughs> I've heard of like bands where like, I, I want to take, for example, like a, uh, like a fucking Ricky Martin or something. Right. Or it's like for years and years and years, like Ricky Martin has the same people. And then all of a sudden, it just becomes, you know, too expensive. It. Yeah. And then they just start over and get like, you know, people that are graduated from like musicians Institute or something. And then they pay them pennies. And then, you know, yeah. <laughs> and then it's, it's like, it's, it's the hope of like, man, maybe I'll get to do this or that or whatever. It's just like, I mean, I feel like I've, I've paid my dues, but at the same time, you know, um, I'm very lucky and very fortunate that I'm still able to, to do this, you know? Um, but yeah, that's the risk of being a hired guy is that the, the call could the call could end at any point. Yeah. You know, I think what you guys, what you've put together with IDK is like so much more fulfilling too from like the creative side. It's sure. it's like a whole art piece. Like everything you do seems like it's tied together. Whereas like when you work with like someone as a hired gun, it's just, you're like, all right, well, call time is three o'clock. Yeah. We'll see you there. Yeah. I mean, in the beginning, you know, of everything I was, I was super involved. Like I was like tour managing our band. I was like for IDK. Re- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Renting out bandwagons, hiring crew, all this crap. And now that we've gotten to the point where it's a little chaotic, I don't have to do that shit anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So now, I, now all I can worry about is, is being creative and trying to write songs and, mm-hmm. you know, jamming with Dallin and stuff. And so, you know, it's kind of awesome. where, yeah, it really is. Yeah. Well, Congrats and like thanks, man. I, I mean, I, and like the most wholehearted way because I'm sure Neil can relate <laughs> as a musician and I relate as an artist. It feels so good when you can like I did this. No, to- yeah. totally, man. Like starting something from like the absolute ground zero, you know. And then and dude, there's no fucking guarantees, man. You know, it just started off as like a fun side project, and we were just playing like shitty dive bars in L.A. and you know, again, like art can stick out. I know big bands that try to put together bands after they are in those bands, and like sometimes people just don't care. Yeah. You know, and it's just the art that stands up. So it's just like, it's like the, it's the brand, it's the identity, it's all of that. But I, I want to go back to what you were saying about like how I can just play for people and you know, how you get those calls and stuff. I mean, honestly, man, it's just, you got to be completely uh, selfless and remove yourself out of anything. It's like, you're there to, you're there to fucking do the job. You're there to play. You're just, you know, what time do I show up? It is what it is. Yeah. You got to be the best. And it's just, and that's, you take it for base value. And that's, that's it. You know? I think that would be hard for me as a musician, like just because of like my path. And also, yeah. it, is, it has to be different for like guitar players or I don't know, like I feel like drums is like you can get in and kind of carry the beat or you can like do it as good as the record and like you can still play the show. Right. It's like if I'm out there and I like play the wrong note, it's like the whole thing's just like that sounded like complete asshole. <laughs> like if I like improvise it, like on the, you know what I mean? Does that kind of make sense? Like, yeah, no, I mean, I, yeah, drums definitely, if, if you're in the band, I mean, I'll tell you this, I've definitely have had, you know, it's been under 10, you know, in the last like 20 years, but I've, I've had like uh, my fair share of like, you know, botches and, uh, <laughs> you know, like for sure botches, never on a festival though, just, just like maybe some club shows, but like I, I've had some botches and 
nobody fucking cares or notices. It's it's the people in the band that notice. Yeah. I mean, man, there was this one time, holy shit, I skipped like a whole entire, uh, I, I skipped a whole entire measure of a song and I was also <laughs> controlling tracks and I'm like, Whoops. oh my God. And that's when I realized it was me. I was like, oh my God. I'm like, I, I've never fucked up like this before. And I was just like, okay. And we, we had like an iPad and stuff. I'm like, boom, press stop. Nobody out there knew. No. And man, was everybody on stage really pissed off? You well, know? I think a lot of those situations kind of come with how you handle this, how you handle it, right? Like the, right. the fuck up or whatever. Cause it's like, true. we have had our fair share of fuck ups for sure. We on Warped Tour, we used to, I don't know, there's this stuff called black powder. Yeah. Uh, it was like this workout stuff and we would all take it to like get jacked up and like get crazy before <laughs> we play. And one time Alex decided to take it and he skipped a whole half of a song. Guys, went right guys, to, guys. After the first course, he went right to the end of the song and we're all just like, <laughs> dude, I <laughs> like, don't turn around that. and look at him. Don't look at him. We're just going to act like this is completely fine. And that song is not that long anymore. Dude, I think we were opening up for like, I don't know, like it was like the killers or some shit. And like we just like recently and like down skipped like a whole a whole thing. You just like you just went you into the bridge, like singing up, and, and I went on the microphone. I just went ah, and you screamed, <laughs> and then you looked at me. I was like, no, no, you know, because there's only two of us on stage. So I yeah. was like, ah, ah, and you looked at me like, oh shit, and then you like got back into it. And you guys were cool. just like, yes, now we we're here now. It's fine. We can do this. We got yep. this. Yeah. See, that's the, I'm fucking jealous. Two people on stage. That's fucking cool. You look at him. You're like, no, and then he's like, all right, and then it's yeah. that's it. Us were like, fuck, we got to like make yeah. eye contact with 16 other people. Or like, right. Yeah. We're, we're, uh, we're cheap bastards. That's what it comes <laughs> down to. <laughs> so just splitting it two ways. It's so you, you don't have to make as much money to make as much money. Yeah. But I mean, like, you know, I mean, it, it, it was just out of convenience, you know, but I mean, we're, we're adding like, you know, here and there, we'll add like backing singers if we have like a budget or oh, that's adding, fire. Yeah. So we did that for, we did that for like Kimmel and Ellen and the, you know, the morning show, CBS morning show and all that crap. But, um, yeah. And it's also funny about COVID too, is because like, I never got to go do those things, but I, I've been on them now, you know, I got so. to see that. That was so fucking cool, man. I was that so awesome. excited for you. Like you I watched? saw you post on oh, Facebook man. and I was just like, this is fucking sick. Oh man. I got to, I mean, getting to see your side of it too, like reading on Facebook, how much this meant to you made it mean something to me. I like watched it and I was like, this is fucking awesome. This is dude, really thanks, fucking man. cool. And to be able to be like, yeah, dude, I have seen this dude play for so many people and kill it. And to be able to go up there and this is his thing. And this is like the platform that he's on is fucking rad. You know, it's again, man, it's, it's, you, 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 you put into it what you, what you take out of it. You know, is that, does that make sense? It's like, Absolutely. I mean, God, I, I don't even know how we got here, but I think a lot of it has to do with timing. A lot of it has to do with the people caring about the art. Sometimes it's the team. Sometimes it's not, you know, it's just, there's no rhyme. What I've learned about music, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason why anything works. Yeah. Sometimes it works for people right out the fucking gate. Sometimes it's like, I remember we went to MTV like in 2019 and they asked me, they're like, how's it feel to be an overnight success? And I was like, I'm like, it Come took on. me like eight, I'm like, it took me 18 years to be an <laughs> overnight success. You're like, you're discrediting you know? everything I've done. <laughs> yeah. And it's like these people are just now yeah. like learning about, you know, me for the first time or whatever, you know, it's yeah. like, and then the, yeah. the other thing too, is like being, a, I'll tell you this too, being in a, being a drummer in so many bands or whatever, with respect to most drummers, no one gives a fuck about the drummer. Are you kidding me? Like who can name the drummer from like anything, you know, it's other than, oh, let me ask you that. Let me ask you this guys who right now I'll, I'll be straight up. Who is the drummer of trapped? Uh, some okay. I just proved my point. Okay. Right, sure. Who but I'm just trapped? saying, like, I'm just exactly, exactly. Who the fuck is the drummer of? Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll be whole, totally honest. I don't know who the drummer of Incubus is. Okay, I, I don't know. Tell you that. That's a good point. And I know probably starts Harrison. with Mike. I'm just guessing. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's, it's a Mike. You know, but unless unless you're invested in like that band, yeah, you know, like you don't fucking know, dude. Or it's Travis. Parker. I don't know who plays drums. I don't know who plays drums for. Uh, Bruno Mars or Taylor Swift or like, you know, so it's like, that's my career. That's me though. In a nutshell, it's like, I don't yeah. even know if people have known me ever until, until now, maybe, you know? Oh, thanks. We threw it on the chat. Okay. That's <laughs> now, that was it. Thank, thanks guys. Whoever, yeah. Thanks Adam. Appreciate that. But you, you get, you guys get what I'm saying now. I, I mean, do. Like, I know what you're your, saying. Yeah. Like who the fuck cares about a drum? That, that's why to your point, it's like, how can a drummer like Travis Bark can just go do this and this and this. And it's like, well, yeah, but like, you know, in the grand scheme of life, 
I mean, a lot of people know who Travis Barker is. I'm just saying, like, who the fuck, like, knows well, who, like, you know. Now like, you could be like, who's the drummer of MGK? And you'd be like, Travis Barker. Like, <laughs> who's the drummer of uh, Will No, Smith, he's got Travis a guy. Barker. He's got a fucking guy. And I can't think of his name right now. But you see oh, what I'm saying? Rook. 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 Yes, you're right. It's, he's, it's Rook. He's but, good. Rook is incredible. No, he is He is absolutely fucking amazing. He's good, man. That guy. But it's kind of crazy, though. You can, The last two years, you can be like, pick a band off the top ten chart. And it's like, Travis Barker. And you'd probably be right about eight of the ten times. I, I know, I know. Now it's like I think there's a rule now where like you can't even get on the radio unless Travis is behind your song. <laughs> He's it's like your some like rule. I don't know. Yeah, it's like let's just we'll put Travis on. We're right. getting in number one. Right. <laughs> if Twenty One Pilots features Travis Barker, we'll we know that it's a rule because the simulation <laughs> is confirmed. Yes. Yeah, but well, I guess what I'm saying is I'm lucky in the fact that like maybe there's like a person out there that knows who I am. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But like. That's kind of cool that there's a it's a two person band, you know. It's like you know, like yeah. with Twenty One Pilots, you know, you know who the drummer is because it it's one of two people. You right. know what I mean? It's like and same with you guys. It's like one of two people. That's fucking rad. You Dude, both. Are, I'm sure. I'm sure there's people that are like, oh, it's that it's it's that guy. But then who's that guy? You know what I'm saying? I'm sure we get a lot of that too. <laughs> but that's the role of being a drummer, though, man. Like no one fucking cares. So how how do you uh, like? I know you've done this for. It sounds like about half your life. Has that at one point affected you at all in a negative way? Or how do you combat that as a human being? The only way it's affected me negatively is the amount of time this year I've spent at home. I'm dead serious. Like it's it's always it's always just been go, go, go for me. And now it's like, oh shit. Like yeah. I'm trapped with myself. Yeah. I can, I only yeah. have myself to rely on. What 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 do I do? Do I keep writing? Do I ride this out? Do I just sit back? Do I look up like the whole Bitcoin thing? Do I, you know, <laughs> do that. what the fuck, what the fuck am I doing? You know, do I write other music? Uh, yeah. Am I collaborating with people? It's, it's just about like using your imagination right now and just staying afloat. Well, I actually, I really am interested in if it affected you. That's good to know too, but I want to know if it affected you being a drummer and being like the unknown piece of a, a, a band. Do you think that that feeling drove you to kind of, desire your own project even more? It's hard to say because I've just, you know, to me, it's, it's never mattered if there's like 10 people or fucking 10,000 people. And I was going to say too, like, if I was just over this, I would have, I would have quit music a long time ago. Yeah. Right. You know, it's just always something that's just like been embedded into me. Like I've, yeah. I grew up like in a music scene. I grew up like helping promoters put on shows and selling. I mean, that's kind of how I got like started with all this. It was just like from like a community, you know, mm -hmm. Utah had like a fuck dude. Utah was the most amazing community of people ever. That's awesome. And there's a bunch of musicians that would play together. I mean, dude, there. So Dan Whitesides uh, from the Used. I mean, he he got known in Utah because he had like a bunch of amazing projects, you know. And he was a he was a drummer I looked up to heavily, like coming up in Utah and like just the local scene. And like there will be bands that he was in that no one will ever hear of, but they were literally like they compete with some of the best bands that are even out there today, you know. And they're so cool and just like. The, the Salt Lake scene was just so different than everywhere else I've ever been to. And so, I mean, I, I owe a lot to just people in Utah because I feel like people in Utah, they just, um, they, they push each other to win. You know, it wasn't really like, I never viewed music as a, as a competition ever. The new transit direction. Yeah. The new, oh my God, man. They were fucking incredible. He was in that band. He was in a band called The Kill. I remember The Kill. You're kidding. Oh, they were the, they were the well, shit, man. We, we would always play in Utah. Like we, and that was one of the cool things we would always come through and there would always be local bands and it would, the shows would be incredible. Like we'd play like Ogden, we'd play like Salt Lake City, we'd play like yeah. all these places. And we'd what go year and was play. that you think? Cause I, I moved away in like 2003. So you might've been there after. Yeah, it was definitely after. I mean, like we started in 2003. So like when we were actually touring through Utah, it probably wasn't until like after 2005, or like yeah. 2006. But like we'd always loved going through there cause we'd be like, Man, there's always like a good hang after the show. Like people yeah. would let us stay at their house or whatever. Yeah. And people were so fucking nice. Yeah. And the bands were just like on another level. You'd go like mm -hmm. you'd play like other places and be like, yeah, that was cool. It was a local band, whatever. But then you play Utah and you're like, holy shit, these. Do you like remember any of the venues that you played there? Do you remember any of that stuff? I remember in Ogden, there was like this Mexican restaurant that we would play at. That was like a Mexican restaurant during the day. And then they had like a stage in the side and it was just. Oh, I've never been there. Yeah, Fucking Ogden, bad. it's weird, man. Ogden just never, like, when I was growing up in Salt Lake, Ogden was never, like, a place you would go. I yeah. You know? We only just, ha like, we were always, like, kind of booked. That was the thing. We were coming up. We would play anywhere. We right. liked playing any 100%. show. It didn't fucking matter. We were like, sure. Can we get on the show there? Cool. Is there 
going to be other bands, sweet, we'll show up, we'll play. You know, at least in the first two years, we were kind of like touring heavily. Like we would play Salt Lake City and I remember coming up in Salt Lake City, one of the crazy things I always remember was like the, the straight edge scene in Salt Lake City was crazy. Oh, yeah, they get violent yeah. there. 100%. <laughs> but dude, they would, come to, they would come to punk rock shows and like start shit with kids and stuff. I mean, like we're all cool, you know, now. Right. I was going to say we always like played and then like we'd meet them and they'd be like the nicest people. And we're like, oh, we were always afraid you were going to hate us. And they're like, well, I mean, they, cool. they pick and choose. They pick and shoot. Well, they did. You know, they're all yeah. like in their, you know, late 40s now. They got to be. But like they would just pick and choose who the fuck they thought was were cool. And I mean, like I never had a problem with them. They always, yeah. they always brought me in with open arms. But yeah, th- there's definitely a lot of chaos. You know, we I think we went on tour. It was our first time playing there. It was with a band called Blessed by Broken Heart. Yep. I remember um, them. They were awesome. They were awesome. They were like this 80s yeah. kind of hardcore band. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tony's making music again. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, Four Known was on that tour, huh? Yep, Four Known was on that tour. We played in Salt Lake City in like the three days leading up to Salt Lake City. They're like, everyone in Blessed by Broken Hearts, like, we're going to get beat up for sure. They're, <laughs> like, they've already hit us up on MySpace. Dude, They're gonna beat I us was, up. I'll tell you this. So like <laughs> I was, when I was with that band, I Am Ghost, um, we were on a tour. Oh, God, it was like the wrong fucking tour for us for sure but it was, we were on tour with um the chariot and misery signals oh mm-hmm. miss six yeah miss uh, great oh, bands but dude, i'm just saying incredible. like we were on the wrong fucking tour and so like i knew there was this there was going to be this like you know production company bringing in that show and it was like ran by like the street edge guys and i just said to like my people i'm like all right look like we're just gonna play and then we're gonna <laughs> pack up and we're just gonna hopefully just be a fly on the wall just like don't talk to anybody just just be cool somebody got jumped out of the show at that show, man, you know, and just like somebody said the wrong thing or someone's girlfriend. I don't know. I don't remember. It's it so long ago, but it's rough. It's rough, dude. Yeah. You know, I always love the shows there, though. I cannot wait to go back. Yeah. The shows there were always like fucking incredible. I think if I if I could move anywhere, I'd probably move to Park City. Now. That's where I grew up. I love Park wow. City. Wow. We've been there together, that, Neil. Yeah. I that's where I show. went to. That's where I went to middle school and high school. And I will tell you this. If you are under 21 up there, it is fucking miserable. Unless yeah. like, unless you like snowboarding, which I, I was an avid snowboarder, but I mean, there's nothing to do for kids up there, man. There's can, zero. Yeah. So that's why, yeah. that's why I go to Salt Lake all the time for shows. Like I, dude, there's nobody in my school that listens to the same stuff as me at all. Yeah. yeah. They'd be, they'd be like, what's a no effects? What's uh, <laughs> you know, what's trust kill records? What's epitaph? What the fuck is uh, fat records? What's lookout? What's hopeless? What's fearless? Like I'm going to teach y'all. Yeah. yeah, and I, I tried, you know. What's a tooth and nail? What's a, I don't know, dude, <laughs> whatever. We have a couple questions that we usually ask every single guest. Okay. Uh, you will be no different. Hit them with the All questions, right, so, Neil. So here's the question, and it's important, you know. I mean, you've toured on Warp Tour. You've toured in a bunch of tours that were pretty DIY. You've kind of come up, and you've, you've played every single venue imaginable. I'm, Probably. Yes. So one thing that we're really curious about is shower shoes or no shower shoes? Oh, shower shoes, 100%. <laughs> You don't know what the fuck's going on out there, man. You ever, you ever played backstage live in San Antonio? Yeah, that's how I got my COVID. Yeah. Like, vac- I'm good on COVID. I played there. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, uh, like the like the flip flops in that area for sure. That's the, actually the worst <laughs> venue ever. Like for showers. I wanted to publish a book called. Um, well, somebody already took the name for it, but I, I can I, I couldn't think of a better one. But um, like Jake from the Casualties, you know, you know that band. He yeah. wanted to make a book called. It was going to be called Shitty. <laughs> it was going to be like a, it was going to be like a copy table book where you just had like a bunch of bad Mohawks, like from Warped Tour, just a copy table book, you know? Yeah. I want to make a, I want to make a touring edition of like all the showers, like in, Oh my God. You know, and, and like for like all the shit that we have to go through on the road, that'd be a great conversation. People, you could just start like a Dropbox and have touring people upload when they're at the venue and just compile it all and have it done in like two days. Sorry, go Neil. No, I was just going <laughs> to say the funny thing is that like people like look up to like certain artists and they're like, this person so fucking rich. They have the best life. And then you go and play like certain venues like Backstage Live or fucking we played this one venue in in New Jersey called School of Rock. Oh, yeah. Tons Uh, of times. It had legit carpet in the bathroom. (laughs) It's like a shower that like drained into the carpet. And it's like, (laughs) wait, they had a shower there. Dude, It was fucking it was like a hose coming out of the wall. Dude, my my bus driver had a heart attack at that venue. Like for real? Probably from the shower. I, we probably we now know why it was like a legit school of rock and then they had a venue <laughs> next door and it was like the fuck it was like the middle of nowhere it's like they always Jesus. had kind of cool shows though we no, always did, did really well there yeah 100 oh, percent. definitely got <laughs> athlete's foot four times 
in one trip there. Just kept going back. Yeah. <laughs> no, it just kept. Yeah. It's like it started talking to me. It's like I'm from School of Rock. I'm like, oh, oh God, can we get rid of this shit? Yep. No, it, I mean, if you if they knew what some of the people that go on tour and they're like, hey, please buy our T-shirt so we can get a hotel and not shower at this venue. Like if people understood what that actually meant, they'd be like, I'll buy six T-shirts, anything to help you guys not have to shower in there. Right. You know, it's like I, I think that book would really help out a lot, honestly. Yeah, I'm for it. Yeah. No, I, I'm no arguing there. <laughs> or you meet some band people that like they somehow have girlfriends or family members that have like the Marriott discount, you know? Oh yeah. Oh, the I mean, family friends fun. discount, 40 bucks a night. Let's go. That was, that was game changer. That's like interview. That's like part of the interview process. Like, okay. Uh, do you, do you snore? Okay, cool. <laughs> you don't snore. got the job so far. Uh, do you have that Marriott discount? Maybe no, 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 Okay. Any that's not, that's not a breaker. Have they ever worked at any kind of Marriott hotel? We can yeah. work with any of the <laughs> the chain. Yeah, yeah. You got you got it in a uh, fucking Cracker Barrel. Yeah. Oh, All man. right. Cool. Oh. Yeah. Hey, uh, Kevin Scaff, you you big old uh, you fucking funny guy. Take it away. 